say I'd get some skid, get some traction going. <laughs> Bit of a boy racer. I bought my van about a month ago. I was struggling to pay rent and things like that up here. Um, I was working full time, but it left me with nothing, like it was fortnightly pays and things like that. So um, I was trying to think of what I could do to um, reduce my cost of living, to help me support my fighting, and the best thing I could come up with was living in my van. I've got to work my absolute ass off to get a house in New Zealand nowadays. I think everyone knows that. I'm just lucky I can stay at the gym, wake up and train. I got into fighting when I was 16, I started training. I got into a lot of street fights when I was little. Unfortunately, those things happen when you went out to parties and things like that. I had my first fight when I was 17, and ever since then, I, just, I was just addicted every day in the gym. Lethal Ladies is one of the only female fight cards, so it's just female fighters, which is really, really good because we don't have a big pool for female fighters. Whoever wins the four women gets to go through to King of the Ring, which is like the ultimate for New Zealand, so that's the promotion you want to be on. If you don't have the confidence that you're going to win this, you shouldn't be doing it. It is kind of like you've got a big head, but I think that's just a, a mind frame you've got to have. Being in a male-dominated environment is hard. I was really lucky to have a few good trainers that actually understand a female. For people to look at female fighters and be like, no, they can do it, and they are entertaining to watch and things like that, that's real cool. My fighting is meant to be my career. I want it to be my career, so it's got to set me up for life. We've got to prove a lot more still. Like, we've got to put in the hard yards. Baby Nansen is not fighting in Lethal Ladies because she got to fight at Madison Square Garden against Michaela Mayer, who's a world boxing champion. She fucking went out there and represented New Zealand really, really well. You want to look after your fighters. Um, it was a smarter decision to pull out for her. Welcome to our humble gym. So right now I'm going to be training Fernanda. And she's got a fight coming up at Lethal Ladies. So we're going to do a bit of shadow boxing and just a hard and fast pad work with her. I think it's going to be my fourth Lethal Ladies now. Um, it's a good chance for us to get out of our comfort zone. Uh, Baby is a great trainer. She is fantastic. She goes an extra mile to make sure that you're ready for your fight. Even when it's her time off, when she should be at home relaxing after working so much, she's still messaging me, hey sis, do you want to come training? I'll hold some pads for you because you're fight week and you got to get ready. before I started kickboxing. I just had a really bad lifestyle. And when I started kickboxing, that, that's when I started feeling like I needed a change. Ended up quitting smoking, getting into my first comp. It's just made me a much better person. It's really built my character. Headgear, shin pads, and boxing gloves. Sam is my partner. Um, we first met in the gym. We were kickboxing together. I fell in love with him straight away. A couple of years later, we ended up having twins. He's an even better dad. He's such a good dad. Women put on a good show. They're very feisty and ferocious. I do think Wendy is very skillful and can take it out. But I also reckon the dark horse is Kelly Bruce. She's the up and comer. They're the way that the girls have to worry about. Growing up, I always had lots of hobbies and lots of things on my plate. Before fighting, I did horse riding competitively for six years. After that, I did ballroom and Latin American dancing competitively for six years. Since switching from ballroom to fighting, I know that I'm going to stay in fighting. Nothing has ever challenged me as much as this. I and my own biggest critic, so I'm always building up that other person. You know, you're getting in the ring with someone that wants to beat the crap out of you. It's terrifying. This is definitely my biggest fight ever. Coming into this, Wendy is definitely the big competition. She's been on my radar for a long time. She's got great technique, great range, uses it well. 
When I moved here in 2013, actually, one of the first fight nights I went to was Princesses of Pain, and I watched Wendy fight on that and thought, I want to be like her, and now I'm fighting her. On a normal show, there'll only be one or two female fights, so by having an all-female fight card, it actually gives a lot more people an opportunity to step up. I think it's awesome. I've been trying so hard, keeping my posture, my chin and everything. Yeah. Like, um, right back. Oh, there. That's tight, but it's not sore. Like, I know, I, like, I've, I know I've just got to grit down and do it, but with the weight loss, no energy, mm. just everything in the last three weeks mm. has definitely put me in a bad headspace, yeah. but... It, it's just one of those things. Like I know when I get to weigh in and things like that, it's going to be all good, um, and definitely fight day. Like I won't even care that I was sick because I'll be all like, yeah, it's fight day. So relax with me now. Can you feel how it's yeah. holding it? A yeah. Bit? Ooh, there was no click at all. Oh wow, I could. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> that's great. Take your shoes off, boys. Take your shoes off. Yep, belt before you enter. We've got some spare gloves over there underneath the stairs. These kids, they got taken away from home temporarily. Um, usually it's from neglect, poverty or abuse. Um, a lot of these children are at risk and I'm here to help them out and show them another pathway. This place is here to welcome everybody as a family, as a community and give them hope as well as teaching them the art of Muay Thai and also just keeping them away from um, distractions of drugs, alcohol. Go! Put it off, bud. Put it off. My childhood was great. I, I have such a close family, but um, I got sexually assaulted when I was young. I, to this day, think that really, really um, stuffed me up mentally. I was angry. I was an angry person. I just wanted to beat people up to make me feel good. And I was abusive to not only other people, but myself. I think I just needed something like the sport to help um, direct me and um, give me hope. And it could help anybody, anybody else. Like it's not for perfect people, for tough guys, it's not for athletes, it's for people in different walks of life. You guys are all fighters, you know, you're, I bet you're all fighting for something, fighting to go home, fighting against bullying. So we teach you guys to kickbox and train hard as sometimes you feel like vomiting, sometimes you don't want to be here, but we're trying to build you guys up to, to be better people. Baby, I don't know anyone who doesn't know who she is. She's got a crazy cool reputation in South Auckland. But as far as I'm concerned, she's got a good reputation nationwide. So I've been diagnosed with terminal cancer, um, hence the reason my son is here. I needed him to be able to have tools in place to deal with the grief. I trust in Baby and I trust in Sam and everybody that they have around them, their whole team. It's not just about fighting, it's a family. And Smack Gym has always been a family. So I'm just heading to the airport to pick up my mum, my dad and my brother. Um, I'm actually super lucky they've come to pretty much every fight I've ever had. Yeah, my parents weren't always supportive of my fighting because I think I mentioned that I was doing ballroom and dancing for six years, which mum and dad absolutely loved. Mum used to do my makeup, dress me up. Dad used to be at the dance competitions asking what music it is and fluffing around. They absolutely loved it. So when I stopped dancing and started kickboxing, they were both distraught. My biggest supporters now, Mum and Dad and Brad, they absolutely love my fighting. I definitely don't take it for granted that they pay lots of money to come up here, they pay to come to the fights, you know, they just drop anything when I have a fight and come up. I definitely owe them a lot for that. I'm really quite anxious to find out the draw. We'll find out tonight at the weigh-in. Wendy's the one that I'm 
a bit nervous about. Like, I'm nervous about all the fights, but Wendy's the one that I've been focusing on, so I really want to get her first and fight her when I'm fresh and uninjured. <laughs> Oh, she's kicking my butt. Yeah, she wasted my ass. Oh, no, get up. I started dyeing my hair when I was, like, 13. So I've been, like, half a girl since I was 13. And then when I started fighting, yeah, that's when the colour came in. I think I'll make peace with my body when I just get, like, a little bit fatter. My body percent is just is nothing at the moment, so when that gets up to maybe 15, 20 percent, I'll be happy. As much as I hated Ronda Rousey's attitude, like she was the boss bitch and all that kind of stuff, which I kind of kind of have to adapt to as well, um, she did a lot for women's fighting, and um, I quite liked it when Holly Holm went and took her out, because Holly Holm was a lot humble, like a lot more humble than Ronda Rousey. But um, if it wasn't for her, we wouldn't have even been looked at. So I just enjoy the sport and enjoy being around the people that are in the sport. We do train just as hard as the boys. Sometimes they don't agree with that. But um, as we go through emotional stress, we don't even think we go through, like we can't control. Like females have hormones and all this kind of stuff that um, take over. Like I could be sitting there hitting pads like all good and then all of a sudden I'm crying and I'm what I call a tough bitch that doesn't cry, and I'm sitting there like, huh. The other girls in the competition, sounds like they're cutting weight, so um, they'll be very hungry, they'll be angry. At least, I don't know, every girl can be different. I mean, I've gone through a weight cut with my period, holy moly. Yeah, you go to sleep in your weight bracket, ready to weigh in the next day, and you put on like two kgs of fluid, so that, that, that's a head screwer. It's at 58.7, which means if I calibrate it to my gym scales, I'm sitting at 59, which means I need to sauna 800 grams. I got my period yesterday. I knew it was due for this weekend, which really upset me because your period is your worst enemy for weight cutting. Basically, no matter what, I have to be underweight. I don't want to be 58.3, I want to be 58.2 or under. Otherwise, it's a huge slap in the face to your opponents, to the promoter, to everyone that's put everything into it. You agree to fight at a weight, you have to make it. No matter how hard it is, don't agree to fight at it if you can't make it. So we wanted to make it easier for female fighters coming through and create more opportunities for female fighters so they didn't have to go through what we went through. When I first started fighting in New Zealand, there wasn't that many female fighters around. You're now seeing a lot of female fights being semi-main events or even a main event, which is awesome. I still think there's a lot of work to be done. There's probably a lot more opportunity than there was, but definitely not as much opportunity as for males in the sport. <laughs> It's the day before a fight. My stomach kind of drops a little bit and you know those butterflies, like you're going to start a race or something like that. That occurs all day in and out waves. You just imagine getting punched in the head. I weighed in fully clothed and just under 54 kgs. So unfortunately, I'm going to be the lightest out of the whole lot of us. Hopefully it works in favor. This week is hands down the hardest emotionally, physically, you know, you're running on minimal food. It's a huge weight cut for me. Probably the most stressful, just trying to think about everything. Am I ready? Have I done enough? Because this week it's too late to do anything. I just want to be there in the ring and that's when all the nerves go away. As soon as we touch gloves, it's gone. So I can't wait for that moment. <laughs> I've come up from Rotorua today. I've been to all of them except the one in Thailand, but yes, I can't not go. <laughs> I'm mixed emotions. Um, I have a lot of supporters here tonight, so I want to make them proud. I think people underestimate female fighters, but now we're starting to come more up there. 
I'm quite excited to watch everyone go down tonight, especially my girl, Fernanda. I've been training really, really hard for this. Um, no doubt she'll give it everything she's got. Adding to our credibility, yeah, and more exposure, and I'm um, showing everybody what Smack Gym is capable of. Anyone can tell you the nerves are insane. I've never felt so scared doing anything in my life. Like kind of just chilling before the fight, you can hear everything. And then when you get in that ring, all I could hear was screaming. I couldn't hear what those screams were, but all I could hear was just people just going nuts. The only thing I see in the ring is my opponent. That's all that matters. I'm just watching her movements, trying to study her really and learn what are her go-to moves and how I can get around them. You go into the touch-up and then you touch gloves and you back off and that's it. That's when it's next gear. It's on, that's when the switch flip though, like you're in mongrel mode and you just want to kill. like a lot of people underestimate me so I've got a lot to prove. It feels like I can give something back by doing my best or proving myself. You train and you put a lot on the line, a stupid mistake, that whole fight's gone. All I could think of was the people that were watching me, my mum came up from Rotorua, all that, so as long as I keep going they'll be fine because they don't like it when I stop. The winner this evening of your four women the King of the Ring qualifier. My training partners at Strike Force put so many hours into me, my family, my friends put up with me for this longer period of time. So when my hand's raised, I feel like, yes, I've done it, I can give something back. I've won it for everyone, not just for me. I'm fighting for women bettering themselves. I want to see women improving in every area of their life, and women in leadership, and women taking opportunities.
When you find a passion that you want to do every single day for the rest of your life, you will give up things, you will dedicate things like move away from family, give up Christmases, give up birthdays. When I first started fighting, I was just like, now I'll fight for free because I love it, I love it, I love it. But then you realise what you've sacrificed, what you've put your body through, what you have to deal with, and you're like, I kind of want to make it worth my while. All these women are very powerful in their own ways. Um, whether they win or lose, it shows the audience who they are. A lot of them have a big story behind their fights, so they show it all in a ring.